خلافتنا بنا سور فتية عظيم شأنها بين البرية السلام عليكم and welcome to a new episode of Beacon of Guidance. This series will be a compilation of questions and answers given by our beloved Hazur, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper. The questions are from various virtual mulakats and compile letters from MDs all over the world. Let's now turn to the United Kingdom for our first question. On the 4th of September 2021, Beloved Hazur blessed Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya UK with a virtual mulakat, where His Holiness was asked one proof of the truthfulness of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Let's take a look at the response. My question is if you were to give one unequivocal proof for the truthfulness of Ahmadiyya, what would it be? You see, for different people, you have different arguments. If a person who does not believe in the existence of Allah Ta'ala, we will first have to make him realize that God does exist. Right? A person who is a Muslim and have Muslim background, you will have to give him a different proof that these are the prophecies of the Holy Prophet Wasallam for this age and they have been fulfilled. And this was the, in the Holy Quran even, that the Mahdi and Messiah will come in the latter days. For a Christian, you will have a different answer. Make them realize that the person who was to come is not the same Messiah, Jesus Christ, who will descend from heaven, but it will come from among the Muslim Ummah. So there are so many different proofs, but we can say that the Holy Prophet also prophesied one heavenly sign, and that was the eclipse of sun and moon. And that will be the sign of the advent of the promised Messiah al-Islam. This was a sign foretold by the Holy Prophet and that is what the people and the other Muslims and other people were waiting for, right? And it occurred in 1894 in the Eastern Hemisphere. And it occurred in 1895 in Western Central Hemisphere. And the claim was already there of the Prophet Messiah al-Islam. So that shows that the person who was to come had been prophesied with so many signs given to us by the Holy Prophet ﷺ and even in the Quran. But there were some heavenly signs and this is one of the heavenly signs. And it has, this has been fulfilled. So after having seen that, even then if we do not believe, then we cannot force anybody to believe. Hmm? This is not the sign which is the man-made sign. That was a heavenly sign. And it happened. For our second question, Beloved Hazur graced a virtual mulakat in Urdu with National Amla members from Norway on the 5th of December 2021. One of the members had asked, how can we instill the love for the Holy Quran within people? Let's listen to Hazur's response. Hazur, we say to Allah Ta'ala ke fazlul karam se ahmadiyon ki aksiriyat jo hai wo rozana talawate Quran kareem ki yaddi hai. Lekin baaz ifraad aise hain jo thode sust hain تو ان کے دلوں میں قرآن کریم کی محبت اور شوق کو کیسے مزید اجاگر کیا جا سکتا ہے تاکہ صوفی سید احمدی جو ہیں وہ قرآن کریم کی تلاوت کی عادی خود بھی ہو جائیں اور اپنے بچوں کو بھی قرآن کریم کی تلاوت کی عادت دیں بات یہ ہے کہ آپ کی جو سیکٹری صاحب تربیت ہیں وہ کہتے ہیں کہ آپ کے باسٹھ فیصد لوگ جو ہیں وہ نماز پڑھتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے جو نماز جو ایک بنیادی رکن ہے اس وہ نہیں اگر ادائیگی کر رہے ہیں اس کی اس کا مطلب ان کے بچے بھی نہیں پڑھتے ہوں گے ان کو دیکھا دیکھی یا اگر پڑھتے ہیں لوگ تو پانچ نمازوں کے بجائے دو یا تین نمازیں پڑھ لیتے ہیں ان کے بچوں پہ یہی اثر ہوگا اب کسی نے اطفال میں سے کسی سوال کیا کسی بچے سے بچے 
دن میں کتنی نمازیں ہوتی ہیں اسلام میں اس نے کہا تین انہوں نے کہا تمہیں کس نے بتایا کہتا میں نے تو اپنے ابا کو اتنا ہی پڑھتے دیکھا ہے یا مسجدوں میں جماعتیں جمع ہو گئیں تو بچے کو خیال ہو گیا کہ شاید مسجدوں میں نمازیں موسم کے لحاظ سے جمع ہو جاتی ہیں اس لیے تین نمازیں ہی ہوں گی حالانکہ یہ تو انتہائی صورت میں نمازوں کا جمع ہونے کی جو موسمی حالات یا وقت کے حالات ہوں ان دنوں میں ہوتا ہے جب کھلا موسم ہوتا ہے ان دنوں میں پانچ نمازیں ادا کرنی چاہیے تاکہ بچوں کی تربیت صحیح ہو تو بات یہ ہے کہ جب بنیادی چیز جو ہے نماز ہے اسی کی ذرا توجہ نہیں تو قرآن کریم تو پھر بعد میں آتی ہے نا بات تو وہ آپ نے مسلسل توجہ دلانی ہے توجہ دلانا ہی آپ کا کام ہے ان کو کہنا ہی ایک اس سے تم لوگ قرآن کریم پڑھو گے تو تمہیں قرآن حکام کا بھی پتہ لگے گا یہی میں بار بار اپنے خطبات میں تقریروں میں بھی کہتا رہتا ہوں کہ قرآن کریم پڑھو قرآن حکام آپ کو پتہ لگو اپنی میٹنگوں میں بھی یہ بتاتا رہتا ہوں اگر وہ سنتے ہوں پروگرام کہ اسی سے تم لوگوں کو پھر پتہ لگے گا کہ اللہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے کیا حکم دیے ہوئے ہیں تو اگر وہ وہی نہیں ہم پڑھ رہے ایک بات جو ہدایت نامہ ہمارے سامنے ہے اسی کو ہم پڑھ نہیں رہے تو ہمیں پتہ کہ لگے گا ہمارے مقصد کیا ہیں ہماری فرائض کیا ہیں ہماری ڈیوٹیاں کیا ہیں تو یہ توجہ دلانا مسلسل کام ہے ہمارا اس لیے سیکٹری بنایا گیا ہے تعلیم القرآن وہ آپ کرتے رہیں پیار سے سمجھاتے رہیں توجہ دلاتے رہیں بار بار کہتے رہیں اور یہی قرآن کریم کا حکم ہے ذکر نصیحت کرو نصیحت کرتے چلے جاؤ ہیں دروغہ تو بنایا نہیں ہمیں ہوا اللہ میاں نے کہا نصیحت کرو اور نصیحت کرنا ہی ہمارا فرض ہے اور یہی ہمارا کام ہے ٹھیک تھکنا نہیں آپ نے یہ ارادہ کر لیں کہ آپ نے تھکنا نہیں کسی سے مایوس نہیں ہونا یہ ہمارا یہی کام ہے مسلسل کوشش 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 اور کرتے جاؤ کوشش ٹھیک ہے اور اپنے ساتھ خدا ملے ہم دیا اور انصار اللہ کی تنظیمیں ہیں لجنا کی تنظیمیں ہیں ان کو بھی توجہ دلائیں کہ وہ بھی اپنے خدام کو انصار کو لجنا کو کہتے رہیں تو اس سے جب سارے مل کے کوشش کریں گے تو یہ کنسولیڈیٹیڈ کوشش جو ہوگی اس سے آپ کو نتائج اچھے بہتر ملیں گے فار آر تھرڈ کوشچن لیٹس ری وزٹ اے ورچوئل ملاقات بلیسڈ بائی بلوڈ حضور with Atfal al-Ahmadiyya in Nigeria on the 8th of January 2022. A tifl asked Hazul what is the strongest argument that the Imam Mehdi has come? Let's listen to the response. My question is, what is the strongest argument we can use to convince our non-Ahmadi friends that Imam Mahdi has come? You see, quite a number of non-Ahmadis or Muslims believe that Messiah and Mahdi will come. And they are thinking that the same Messiah, the Jesus Christ, will come from the heaven. But Allah Ta'ala in the Quran says, nobody can live forever. And whenever a person lives his life, he has to pass his life here on this earth. We believe that the Holy Prophet is the last Prophet and he is the person who was the most loved by Allah Ta'ala in every respect, more than any other prophet. Yeah? So Allah Ta'ala loved him more than any other prophet. So if it was possible to take any person to heaven, it would have been the Holy Prophet Sallallahu not Jesus Christ, right? The Holy Prophet himself, while explaining the words of the Holy Quran, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَحْلَقُوا بِهِمْ That among the, the people of the later days, a, the person will appear, or the people will be like you. So when the companion of the Holy Prophet ﷺ asked, who are those people? And who is that person who will appear in this world in the later days? When the, the, the people asked three times, then he put his hand on the shoulder of Hazrat Salman Farsi and said that the person from among Salman Farsi will appear in the later days. That means he will not be an Arab, the Mahdi and Messiah will appear from among these people. Apart from that, the Holy Prophet said that uh, 
when the promised Messiah will claim that he is the promised Messiah and Mahdi, there will be a heavenly sign. And that heavenly sign is the eclipse of sun and moon on particular dates and days in the month of Ramadan. And he said that this sign has never happened before. So, according to the prophecy, the lunar and solar eclipse occurred during those days in 1894, when there was a claim of the Prophet Messiah already there in the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. And it is well documented in the newspaper that it happened. So these are the things which have happened. And there is no claim of the, any other promised Messiah. Jesus has not appeared. He has not come down. He has not descended from heaven. So. There is only one man's claim. And the prophecies have also been fulfilled and are being fulfilled by Allah Ta'ala. So these are the things which uh, compel us to believe that the Prophet Messiah who claimed himself to be the Prophet Messiah has appeared and is the right person. And now the Holy Prophet also said that the Prophet Messiah and the Mahdi will appear in the 14th century. And now 14th century has passed. So since there is only one person who claimed himself to be the person, and we are seeing that his community is flourishing day by day, so that shows that he is the right person. And the time has also passed. And no other person will come now. So you can only argue with them, but those who are very rigid and uh, they don't want to believe in anything, they are very stubborn, then you cannot force them to believe. But there are quite a number of arguments, right? So you can read the mass literature and uh, you will find more arguments. There are heavenly signs and worldly signs. And quite a number of them have been fulfilled. It's now time for question number four. On the 28th of August, 2021, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih V, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asr al-Aziz, presided over a virtual mulakat with Nasir al from the UK. One of the members had asked, why is it that non-MDs label MDs as disbelievers? Let's listen to Hazrat's response. My question is, why do non-Ahmadi Muslims say that Ahmadis are disbelievers, even though we believe in the Shahada, follow the Holy Quran, and the teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I think you better ask them. <laughs> we are doing, we are following, we, we, we believe in the same Prophet, we believe in the same book, the Holy Quran. We say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And uh, all the teachings of Islam, we practice. And we not only practice, we preach. And this is why thousands of, hundreds and thousands of non-Muslims are accepting Islam through Ahmadiyyat. You can show your example. You can set your example before them. You tell them what I believe and what I practice. Then, this is now your duty to preach and remove all their doubts. Okay? Okay. Uh, so now, you see, in, in Ghana, in Ghana, for instance, the early Ahmadis were from among Christians. Why did they accept Islam? Because they saw the beauties of Islam through Ahmadiyyat. So this is how you can preach that we are Muslims. The only difference is that you believe that the, the Messiah of the age who was destined to come according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, has not yet come. But we believe that that has come in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad 
and that is the only difference. And because of this, you say that we are not Muslims. And the other thing is that we believe that the Prophet Messiah and Islam has the status of prophethood because the Holy Prophet وسلم, declared him as prophet in one of his traditions, not only one time, four times, right? And they say that no other prophet can come after the Holy Prophet وسلم. We, we also believe that no other prophet can come after the Holy Prophet وسلم, but the, the prophet with new Sharia, with new law. But a subordinate prophet can come. And he was to come according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, And even in the Holy Quran it is written in Surah Juma that the prophet will come. So this is the difference. This is why they say we are not Muslims. They say, okay, you believe that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is the prophet, but you do not believe in the finality of the Holy Prophet وسلم. We say we believe that he is the last of the prophets who brought Sharia. And the Holy Quran is the last book of Sharia. We believe that. We, we believe that there is no God apart from the one who sent the Holy Prophet وسلم, and all the previous prophets. And we believe that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is his prophet. Final prophet. The last of the prophets. So, but the only difference is that we believe that the promised Messiah is the subordinate prophet and we do not say it with our own interpretation. It was clearly, explicitly explained by the Holy Prophet وسلم, that the promised Messiah who is destined to come will be, will be having the status of prophet. Okay? This is the difference. This is why they say we are not Muslims. For the fifth question, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asraziz, blessed a virtual mulaqat in Urdu on the 21st of August 2021 with Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya, Germany. One of the members asked, What changes has Hazur felt due to COVID 19? Let's take a look. <laughs> कि कुछ साइंटिस्ट कहते हैं कि कोरोना की बवाह की वजह से इंसान की इंसान की नफसियत वो नेगेटिव हो रही है असर अंदाज़ हो रहा है और मेरा सवाल है प्यारा हुजूर प्यारे हुजूर के के आपका इस इस बारे में क्या नजरिया है और इससे आपकी जिंदगी में क्या तब्दीली आई है ओह मेरी मन तो कोई तब्दीली नहीं आई साइंटिस्ट कहते हैं वो साइंटिस्ट इसलिए कहते हैं कि जो लोग दुनियादार हैं वो दुनियादारी की सोच रखने वाले जिनका क्लबों में जाए बगैर गुजारा नहीं है जिनका शराब कट्ठे पर ही पिए बगैर गुजारा नहीं है जिनका हाव हु किए बगैर नाच गाने किए बगैर गुजारा नहीं है उन पे जो पाबंदियां लगी हैं तो वो परेशान हो गए वैसे भी कोई भी बीमारी जब आती है और जब उसको इतना ज्यादा उसी पे माने पर फैल जाती है पेंडेमिक हो जाती है और सारी दुनिया उसमें इन्वॉल्व हो जाती है एक नफ्सियाती असर ये पड़ता है कि पता नहीं हम बचेंगे कि नहीं बचेंगे मगर अगर ये इंसान को ये पता हो कि जिंदगी और मौत अल्लाह ताला के हाथ में है और जो एहतियाती तदाबीर अल्लाह ताला ने कही हुई हैं उनको इख्तियार करना चाहिए जो मयसर इलाज हैं वो करने चाहिए तो फिर दुनिया की बाज़ चीज़ें ना मिलने की वजह से बाज़ एक्टिविटीज़ ना होने की वजह से या बाज़ जो रूटीन है उसकी तब्दील होने की वजह से एक मामूली परेशानी तो होती है लेकिन इतना ज़्यादा परेशान होने की ज़रूरत नहीं अल्लाह ताला से दुआ करनी चाहिए कि अल्लाह ताला हालात जल्द बंद रहे और अल्लाह ताला की तो रजू करें अगर दुनिया वाले तो ये जो डिप्रेशन वाली बीमारी है अगर किसी को है इस पेंडेमिक की वजह से वो भी दूर हो जाएगी अल्लाह ताली कहते हैं अल्लाह ज़िक्र तत्मकुल के तो अल्लाह ताली के ज़िक्र से दिनों को इतमान मिलता है तो इसमें ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा अल्लाह की तरफ रजू करना चाहिए लेकिन दुनियादार इस तरह रजू नहीं करते इसलिए वो ज़्यादा मुतासर होते जाते हैं बाकी जहाँ तक मेरी रूटीन का सवाल है मेरी सवाल यह कि मुलाकातें बंद हो गई जो आमने सामने हुआ करती थी इसके अलावा तो मेरी रूटीन में कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता मुझे तो सुबह से लेकर शाम तक काम के बाद फुर्सत भी नहीं मिलती मुझे पता नहीं लगता पेंडेमिक बाहर फैला भी हुआ कि नहीं है और वो जो थोड़ी बहुत कमी थी मुलाकातों की 
वो इस तरह वर्चुअल मुलाकात में तुम लोगों से करके मैं पूरी कर लेता हूँ हैं कम से कम हफ्ते में दो दिन तो इस तरह गुजर जाते हैं बाकी मसरूफियत होती है फिर दफ्तरी मुलाकातें भी चल रही होती हैं मेरी बाकी खतों किताब भी चल रही होती है डाक भी चल रही होती है ये सब सिस्टम चल रहा है अल्लाह के भरो से जमात अहमदिया के इतनी दुनिया में फैली हुई है उसके कामों को देखना निगरानी करना वो वक्त का पता नहीं लगता किस तरह गुजर गया बल्कि वक्त तो थोड़ा लगता है और काम ज़्यादा लगता है मेरा सवाल है आपसे आपको अपनी मसरूफियात मुश्किल लगते हैं ज़ाहिर है काम जो है अगर सही तरह करना हो तो काम तो मुश्किल होता ही है लेकिन अल्लाह ताला उसको आसान कर देता है और काम हो जाता है तकरीबन रोज़ का रोज़ काम मैं निकाल ही देता हूँ बाकी फिर भी फिक्र ये रहती है कि जो हक है काम करने का अदा हो जाए अगर नहीं अदा हुआ तो कहीं अल्लाह ताला की नाराज़गी ना हो तो इस लिहाज से मुश्किल होती है ठीक है बाकी काम तो हर काम अगर संजीदगी से आदमी ने करना है तो मुश्किल ही होता है उसको मेहनत करनी पड़ती है In this segment, we'll be taking a look at questions and answers which have been taken from an article in Al Hakam called "Answers to Everyday Issues," which is guidance that Hazrat the Mirul Mu'minin, Khalifa Tul Masih the Fifth, Ayyadullah Taala bin Asl Aziz, has given on various occasions in his written correspondence and during MTA programs. For our first letter, Azur Ayyadullah Taala bin Asl Aziz was asked who Gog and Magog were. Hazur Ayyadullah Taala bin Asl Aziz in a letter dated the 14th of January 2020 gave the following reply Dajjal the Antichrist Gog and Magog are specially mentioned among the afflictions and tribulations that Islam was to endure in the latter days Indeed all of them are various manifestations of the same trial Dajjal is the name of the religious aspect of that trial which means that that group will corrupt the religious beliefs and views of the people in the latter days the group that would destabilize the state of political affairs and destroy the political peace and order has been referred to as gog and magog what is meant by both of these groups is the worldly power and the religious facet of the western christian nations however allah the exalted has also informed us through his beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when the trials of dajjal and gog and magog would arise and Islam would have weakened he would appoint the promised messiah to safeguard Islam muslims would not enjoy material power at that time but the jamaat of the promised messiah alayhi salam would relentlessly work with prayers and preaching thanks to which allah the exalted himself will destroy those evils for the second letter hazrat the mirul mu'minin ayyadullah taala bin asr aziz was asked why the holy quran had used the word istifaq he has chosen you for Hazrat Maryam since she was a woman and not a prophet Hazur Ayyadullah Taala bin Asl Aziz in a letter dated the 14th of January 2020 gave the following reply As far as the usage of the word istifaqi I have chosen you by the Holy Quran for Hazrat Maryam is concerned the Holy Quran and the ahadith show that this word has not only been used for prophets but also for other people chosen to carry out any extraordinary or important task Hence the word is used in the Holy Quran by Hazrat Abraham alayhi salam and Hazrat Jacob alayhi salam to tell their children that Allah the exalted had chosen an extraordinary religion for them it reads ya baniya inna allaha istafa lakum ad-din fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun o my sons truly allah has chosen this religion for you so let not death overtake you except when you are in a state of submission Furthermore the Holy Quran has used this word while describing the superiority of the progeny of Abraham ali Ibrahim and the progeny of Imran ali Imran over the peoples of that era it states inna allah istafa adam wa nuh wa al ibrahim wa al imran ala al alamin allah did choose adam and noah and the family of abraham and the family of imran above all peoples Similarly it is mentioned in the hadith that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked as to which zikr was most liked by Allah the exalted he replied mustafahu Allah li malaikatihi subhana rabbi wa bihamdihi subhana rabbi wa bihamdihi 
The dhikr preferred by Allah for his angels is subhana rabbi wa bihamdihi subhana rabbi wa bihamdih. Holy is my Lord and to him belongs all praise. Holy is my Lord and to him belongs all praise. Thus the word istifa means to choose, to prefer and to select. That is to say, to bring someone closer because of their moral excellent qualities or to accord them a station in one's vicinity on account of their good deeds. Although Hazrat Maryam was not a prophet of God, Allah the Exalted had endowed her with such excellent qualities that upon seeing these very qualities, Hazrat Zakariya a prophet of Allah, wished to have children like her. Thus, thanks to the prayer of Hazrat Zakariya Allah the Exalted blessed him with a son in the form of Hazrat Yahya who was also a prophet. Owing to the Israelites' constant disobedience to God's prophets and their mockery and denial of them, Allah the Exalted granted Hazrat Maryam a son in the personage of Hazrat Jesus السلام, who was a prophet but none of the men from among the children of Israel had any part in the birth of that son. Following that, the great blessing of prophethood was taken away from the children of Israel forever. Thus, it is due to her extraordinary qualities that Allah the Exalted used the word Ustafaki, He has chosen you, for Hazrat Maryam in the Holy Quran. And for our third letter, Hazrat the Mir al Mu'minin, Khalifat al Masih the Fifth, Ayyad al Hadala bin Nasr al Aziz, was asked about the status of a hadith reported by Hazrat Aisha, assuming that a woman's testimony was worth half. Hazur Ayyad al Hadala bin Nasr al Aziz, in a letter dated the 14th of January 2020, gave the following reply The assumption that a woman's testimony is worth half is incorrect. In the case that it becomes necessary to include a woman's testimony on matters that women usually do not deal with in their day-to-day lives, the Holy Qur'an guides that another woman should also be present with the female witness, since the matter would not be related to women. If the female witness forgets anything for some reason, the other woman may remind her. Otherwise, the testimony of only that one woman will be considered complete. Moreover, in matters particularly relating to women, the Holy Prophet ﷺ would even decide entire cases based on the testimony of a single woman. Hence, it is narrated in Sahih Bukhari that Hazrat Aqaba bin Harith married a lady. Later on, some women of ordinary standing came and said that she had breastfed both the spouses. The Holy Prophet ﷺ separated the couple despite the husband denying being breastfed by that woman. And for our final letter, Hazur Ayyadullah Dalla bin Nasr al-Aziz was asked regarding reciting durood and other kinds of zikr. Hazur Ayyadullah Dalla bin Nasr al-Aziz, in a letter dated the 25th of December 2019, gave the following answer. This is also the way to infuse passion in our recitation of durood, namely to recite it abundantly with love and devotion. Just as we take an interest in the rest of our affairs and pay attention to them, if we create the same love and interest in these good deeds, then our objectives will certainly be achieved, inshallah. The frequent recitation of durood is certainly a very blessed deed. As it is stated in a hadith, the supplication of a person can only reach Allah the Exalted by invoking blessings upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ. However, if reciting the durood alone had been enough for everyone and could absolve one of the rest of the supplications, then why would the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself recite supplications other than durood on different occasions? And why would he teach various kinds of supplications to the companions? Hence, there are many such supplications mentioned in the hadith which the Holy Prophet ﷺ used to recite and also taught them to the companions. This is also the practice that we observe in the blessed life of his ardent devotee, the Promised Messiah ﷺ. Nevertheless, in light of the saying of the Holy Prophet ﷺ that إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Actions depend on motives. If someone was to make durood the total sum of all their supplications and confine them to that alone, with the intention and the optimistic outlook that the durood would become a means of receiving the blessings of Allah the Exalted, then Allah will also treat such a person according to that intention and optimistic outlook, as Allah the Exalted has stated 
in a hadith Qudsi that أنا عند ظن عبدي بي I treat my servant according to his perception and expectation of me. Various duruds have been mentioned in the hadith. Scholars of the ummah have also used various kinds of durud and given them different names. Some of those duruds are lengthy while others are shorter. The durud that brings more blessings and is more blessed is surely that which was uttered by the blessed tongue of the Holy Prophet wasallam, and one that he taught to his companions. The essence of these matters is a person's intention, love and attention to how he wishes to absorb the love of Allah the Exalted. Therefore, depending on the intention, love and devotion with which he will carry out these things, his intention and sincerity will surely reach Allah the Exalted. And that concludes another episode of Beacon of Guidance. Join us again next time to hear more questions and answers with our beloved Hazur. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.